Welcome to this overview of the gas station financial feasibility model from efinancialmodels.com. The purpose of this model is to figure out if a new gas station project uh, is financially feasible. We do this by looking at the expected uh, project and the project IRR and the levered um, IRR, if we can get a sufficient return out of this project. And we also have a look at a variety of other um, financial ratios and indicators to, to figure out if this project uh, makes sense or if we need to, uh, to change something in the scenario. Uh, we have here an Excel model which has different uh, sheets. The main sheet is the executive summary sheets which basically summarizes all the outputs of the model and also contains uh, uh, several of the key assumptions. Um, a table with the um, sensitivity um, variation um, analysis if you change any of the key uh, key assumptions what will happen to uh, the expected uh, IRR. These tables are quite heavy so what I should do I should go here to uh, preferences and we don't want to automatically update that so let me see we just uh, if we change something, we uh, don't want to have this every time updated. We just want to have everything else updated, so we save a bit of time when we add, when we play around with the model. Um, apart from that section, we also have here all the other assumptions basically uh, listed here below on the executive summary sheet. Then we have another sheet with the operating model. The operating model includes uh, detailed projections in terms of the gasoline sales volume, the prices, uh, the cost structure, everything in there is basically uh, contained herein so that you have projections for over 10 years. For the first uh, three years, you also have monthly projections. You can simply um, uh, here uh, unhide these uh, columns. And what the model does is it basically will, um, uh, will basically f uh, calculate how much uh, is, will be the budget on a monthly basis. So this will help you to um, to better manage the business during the startup and gives you a uh, specific goals what to what to achieve. Then we have another sheet which is the financial projection sheet. Here we have basically uh, income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement forecast for the next uh, for the next years to come. We also have a look at all the uh, financial ratios and also will then calculate what's the free cash flow for the project and what's the cash flow to the equity uh, shareholders. So that's this sheet. Then we have here another sheet if you need a monthly budget. We, um, we can also see um, this, um, this business plan. What, what does it translate to in terms of a monthly, um, on a monthly profit uh, basis? And we can basically here see what we need to achieve on a monthly basis in order to stay within the business uh, plan. Another analysis sheet here is a break-even analysis. <clears throat> we uh, calculate what's the <clears throat> uh, what's the required um, sales volume in terms of gallons of um, <clears throat> of, um, of gasoline sold in order that we can basically cover the, the fixed costs. And then it basically tells you that in order to uh, cover all the fixed costs and reach break-even at EBITDA level, you need to sell 700. 12,000 gallons here per year and which gives you here another table to see uh, how close uh, if you if you do another um, result what would that mean in terms of, of loss or of profit um, on a monthly on a monthly basis so this uh, sheet now can help you to um, to prepare your business plan the way to work with this sheet is basically to uh, start start here you need to enter to go over all the assumptions in blue and for instance uh, um, figure out how much um, is the expected sales volume in terms of gasoline you enter here a value um, and you can then basically see what does this mean in terms of the of the revenues and in this model uh, revenues are derived from two sources you basically have on one hand you have the sales from the, the gasoline sales uh, where is it? Here. So that's the gas sales. You have here different types of, of gas. And for each one, you can basically forecast 
how much is the uh, the share in terms of uh, of the volumes uh, of the volumes uh, sold. Here in this case, we uh, we don't do any sales in the first year because we we are <clears throat> building the gasoline station. But in the in the second year, it basically starts. We have here. Uh, for sales and then we basically split by the type of gas and we can also assume different pricing and mostly or more importantly also you also have other activities uh, going on at the gas station for instance a supermarket or repair station so we have here a model which basically links the expected sales which is an indicator for traffic how much sales will then generate at these um, at at these uh, at these stores, and then we can basically figure out what's the um, what's the expected sales for these um, for supermarket repair station or car wash, and also how this will develop if we are going to attract more traffic uh, going going forward. These are estimates you need to play around. We have here basically in the assumption sheet uh, different uh, sections. If you go here to the sales assumptions, you see you. You will need to, to change this until uh, until uh, <coughs> the required or the, the forecasted revenues make uh, make sense to, uh, make sense to you. In terms of the gasoline sales, the way this model uh, works is that we forecast the um, basically the the sales volume. Then we also forecast the price for the gasoline, and in terms of the cost, the purchase cost for the gasoline, we uh, here make this. Um, a bit simple and we just enter how much profit on a per gallon basis uh, can be achieved when when running this business so if the price of gasoline goes up this means this profit margin stays stable but your um, your revenues uh, move up but also your costs uh, move up this will have an effect on on the on the networking capital which is then also flowing through uh, flowing through the model um, what else we can do with the model? We can run a simulation. What happens if we rent or if we own the gasoline station? You see this has a different profitability. Reason being, if we rent, we don't need that much uh, investments. We don't need that much capex. So there is no investment for land and building if you, if you rent. But you will have, of course, the, uh, the rental expense, which you can see here on the... Uh, on the income statement, if we actually own the building, then there is no rental expense. Voila. If we own it, there is no rental expense, but it means that we have to incur all the costs to actually build the uh, the build the building. So our capex figure uh, go, goes up. And now if we now have a look at the returns. You see basically here that's quite low. It's only 4.8% IRR. This means if we look now here at the um, sensitivity uh, table, let me just um, update this again so that the sensitivities are correctly uh, uh, correctly work. <clears throat> you basically see here these are the drivers. So we have one important drivers, which are the non-gas revenues. So what I can do is I can simply um, assume that we sell more, um, we generate more revenues with more non-gas items. I can uh, move this, move this up a bit. Voila, and you see, you basically see um that here now the project arrow gets um it becomes higher but you will also see that now we're generating a lot of revenues with non gas if that's uh, realistic or not you need to you need to determine this to determine this if that's realistic or not if you find it non realistic uh lower this assumption again and see basically here we go we go back and see basically here uh, how much uh, more gasoline you will need to you will need to sell? If you see here, that's one important drivers and what is the gasoline sales volume. So we can go here and <clears throat> basically we'll have to find ways to sell more gasoline so that our returns uh, basically uh, can in, can increase. For instance, here we are selling 
this amount of gasoline voila <clears throat> and now you see this has a direct effect on the on the returns we still have a bit more returns to generate but for instance if we actually would rent the building you see then this is actually quite uh, <clears throat> quite an attractive um, return so this model overall gives you a tool to um, prepare your fin financial feasibility studies to uh, run different uh, scenarios to also look how the, um, your uh, gas station project can be financed. You have here a uh, uses and sources of funding table. Uh, for instance, a mortgage shows up when you own the building. If you don't own the building, you will have to use other um, source of financing, maybe some debt, and the rest will be, uh, will be in equity. And also, the model also includes basically a model where you can take on other investors on board, and you can basically uh, allocate them a certain amount of equity and you can figure out how much uh, return they can expect and how much returns you can you can expect all these um, all these figures are dynamic so if you change uh, one assumption it will basically flow through the flow through the whole model okay so um, we hope that uh, this overview was useful if yes please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to this channel and visit our website efinancialmodels.com. A link to the model is included in the description below. Thank you for watching.